welcome to Ephesus. Not many people living here today, plenty of visitors though, but in Paul the Apostles' day, this was a major city. They reckon 250,000 people occupied this place in the time of the Apostles. It was very strategically placed. It's on the edge of the Aegean Sea on the west coast of Turkey. A harbour place, a place of trade, a place where there was a lot of coming and a lot of going. And so God targeted this place and God sent the Apostle Paul here to establish a church. And what a church he established. Just over there is a place called the School of Tyrannus, or it was the ruins of it. And in there Paul for two solid years taught every day the Lord Jesus Christ. He preached the word of God, he taught the word of God, and he established a church here that was rock solid. Granted it lost its love by the time we come to the book of Revelation, but those early years, those early few decades in this church, it was on fire for God in the midst of a very hostile environment because here they worshipped Artemis or Diana of the Ephesians. And that got the apostles in a lot of trouble. It got Paul in a lot of trouble, so much so that there was a whole uproar in the city. Demetrius, the one who made the shrines and the head of the, that guild, he wanted the apostle run out of town. And uh, eventually he got his desire, but he couldn't run Christ out of town because the church flourished in this place. And so much so that John, the apostle, came here with Mary, the mother of Jesus. Timothy came here. This was a significant site, and it's a significant site today. Because not only do we read about it in the Bible, but we come here and we walk through it and we prove that the Word of God is 100% accurate. God spoke about this place in his Bible. People have only recently in the last few hundred years uncovered it. But here we are today, more evidence, more proof, more archaeological, scientific evidence that what God says is true. Listen, what God said about you is true too. God said you're a sinner. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's true. That's true. For anyone who would care to examine their own heart in honesty, they'd have to admit you're a sinner. You've done wrong in God's sight. You've done wrong and you know it. But you know the beautiful news is that the gospel of Jesus Christ, God saves sinners. And if you humble yourself and acknowledge who you are, acknowledge what you've done wrong, throw your life at the Lord Jesus Christ in repentance and faith towards him, then God promises you that God will make you a disciple and follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. You'll become part of the new covenant because the new covenant will become part of you. In that new testament, God agrees with men that if men will repent and trust in Jesus Christ, then God will put his spirit inside each and every one of us. Our thoughts will change. Our hearts and desires will change. Our whole lives will be utterly transformed. You know, this place has transformed quite a lot in 2,000 years. What it was then was absolutely beautiful, but now it's become a ruin. That's like many of our lives. We start out in life not too bad and then sin makes us a ruin. But you know what God does? God restores ruins. He restores spiritual wrecks. I was such a wreck. I don't know about you, but I know God's restoring my life. I know I'm not perfect today, far from it, but I know I'm not what I used to be. God has been doing a work of restoration in my life for 20 years. It's continuing and it's an ongoing work, but thank God God's still working on me with patience. My question is God working on you. Have you let him in? Have you let God into your life? Let Jesus Christ in today. See what he'll do. Just take him by the hand. Ask the Lord to lead you in repentance. Ask the Lord to guide you in a new life. He will. He's out there and he's looking for you. He wants you to come to him. And he said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest.